thousand other neurons. Sitting on your shoulders is the most complicated object in the known universe. <coughs> it's actually uh, I find it amusing. I don't know about others because complicated. I don't know. Maybe it's complicated. Maybe it's not. It's just that we haven't solved the mystery of this complicated object known as the brain. That's why we are calling it complicated. But maybe soon enough, as technologies grow, people get even more better in understanding the mystics behind the brain. Maybe things might change. So, what will be covered during this talk? Okay. So, we will be covering what is NiPipe, NiPipe, sorry. What is NiPipe? The overview, what are workflows, what are the packages in NiPipe? What are the other uh, dependencies required for NiPipe and other things like those? And how do we create them, basically? So we'll be looking a bit on the code as to how do we work on E5. So let's move on. So this is the basic process, an outer level flow in neuroimaging. We first have a, I haven't mentioned it in the start, but we have a MRI image. Any kind of MRI image will do. If it's a normal MRI, functional MRI, it could be an EEG image, EMG image, whatever. So we start with an image, then we try to guess what kind of parameters are we working on. Are we working on something which is related to autism? Are we working on something which is related, related to ALS? Or are we, really, are we working on a disease? Or are we working on certain connectome? I will explain what connectome is a bit later on. Uh, so after guessing the parameters, we later on collect images for processing. So basically we aggregate all the images that we want to work on. And then later we collect them and process them together. So if we have collected the images together, then we specify the goals, okay. So I have the images, I have my parameters, what do I need to do next? Do I need to process it, do I need to uh, color image it, or do I need to specify which connectomes are connected to which, or, do I, or what do we need to do? So it could be many goals or it could be a single goal, anything can happen. Once we specify our imaging goals, we create some new parameters for our goals. Once we specify the goal, the text right now whatever is there able to see all right so where was i yeah imaging goals so once we specify our imaging goals we move on to creating some new parameters so what we mean by that is okay once okay we have our goal as okay we have to uh, create a new connectome for uh, for autism patients we have to create a uh, imaging pipeline or whatever. So we move or keep on creating parameters until and unless, okay, we get our final output. So this is the basic process behind uh, the neuroimaging. So when we do neuroimaging, the dilemma with a neuroscientist always happens is, we have too many choices. We have too many choices to choose from. 
as you can see, we have AFNI, we have FSL, we have ANTS. All of these do separate jobs of their own. Like uh, SPM works on functional MRI images. Uh, and uh, AFNI works normally on uh, EEG and uh, other images which are taken through the eye. So we have too many options. That's the case which happens with uh, the neuroscientists or neuroinformaticians for that matter. And uh, another problem which recently which neuroscientists face right now is when data keeps on increasing and uh, we get a lot more data to compute. So how do we process them? How do we how do we make it in a format that okay the final neuroscientist will understand that he doesn't have to you know look look through the look through the blinds to see what is needed and you can see the final point which emphasizes the heading which is big data computing the thousand functional connectome project so as i mentioned uh, connectome before i'll explain it right now uh, connectomes are basically uh, neuronal paths which connect from one neuron to another. So basically what you do is you connect one neuron, you show their connections in a computer format which a programmer or a neuroscientist will understand. So. This functional connectome project is basically a pet project uh, uh, by one of my mentors and we're working under. So this is the data for aggregated from one of the papers which was presented by my mentor. Uh, this project started in December 2009 and since then uh, there has been an explosion in the access of the data as well as sharing of the data. Like a lot more neuroscientists and neuroinformaticians are taking in the data, sharing the data with each other and uh, accessing them, working on them and running them in their own ways. So as you can see the graph it's steadily increasing, it peaked at around December 2011 which is when a protein result came in for ADHD and then it went down and again peaked at the end of September 2012 when Abide which is a connectome framework for autism patients, I can't remember the full form but it's for autism patients like uh, the project is basically you have connectomes which is scanned from the autism patients only and it is later aggregated and stored inside the FCP INDI which is the functional connectome project. So this leads to conflict between the neuroscientists and the developer. Neuroscientist thinks okay which package should I use? Uh, because obviously he's not a programmer, not a full-fledged one at least. Which package should I use? How, how do I use this package? And why do I? Why do I need to use the package? Why do I use SciPy? Why do I use NumPy? What, do, what use will, will it have in my, what, uh, what impact will, will it have in my project? As for the developer part, Developer will think, why will I develop my project for a neuroscientist when I can easily make something else? Something else for, let's say, some corporate developer, let's say, as a freelance maybe. Or how, when he creates one, let's say, for a neuroscientist, how do I share it? How do I, you know, upload it online for other neuroscientists or other developers to use? And the final point, which is, uh, creating a package which can support multiple computer architectures. As we all know, there are multiple computer architectures starting from the low level PCs 
to bigger supercomputers. And uh, as data keeps on increasing, as processing power keeps on increasing, we need to create packages which can support all the architectures uniformly. So moving on, this creates a massive conflict amongst the both breeds. So we have more questions like these, like how do we train people in using these packages, these softwares? How do we train the neuroscientists and how do we uh, train the new developers who want to work on in neuroimaging, neurosciences? Or how do we create new tools for research? And performing research which could be reproducible by others. Reproducible out here is a very key point because uh, your data or your research, whatever data you got after your research and your inferences you made, if another scientist thinks, okay, let me uh, reproduce these experiments, let me take the data, let me reproduce the experiments, it should produce the same inference, the same output, no matter the whatever happens. It should produce the same, same uh, inference in whoever, whoever kind of scientist finally reproduces the uh, kind of conditions the research is being done on. And how to work with different packages, interfaces, file formats. As we mentioned in our, uh, uh, this brain imaging softwares, as we all know, these softwares are all different. So obviously, they all store data in different format. They all have their inter uh, interface differently to work on. So when you work on something which is different, which has different packages, which has different interface, so how do we link them together? How do we work on them together so as to, you know, like it doesn't create a conflict in, in the program itself? So this is one of the questions which was faced by most of the neuro, neuroscientists as a part of, as a part of this project. <clears throat> so NiPipe comes into the picture in this case. So why it helps in this case because it brings together all the imaging and the pipelining softwares together under a single wrapper. So like you don't have to, you know, like have to work on SPM separately or FSL separately or AFNI separately and you know, like you have conflicts when you are linking them together in a single program because the formats of these three programs are different altogether or yeah, when you're working on NiPy, it's another package which NiPy com comes under. So all of these packages, they are linked together under this name, NiPy. So now the question comes, why use Python? Because obviously people can make a package like this in C++ or maybe in another, other languages. So one answer was it was very easy to learn because it's being taught in schools right now and all over the world. I don't know about India, but in all over the world you are being taught Python as one of the primary language in schools, in colleges, high schools. And it's cross-platform, self-explanatory because it explains why you can run the same, uh, same Python script in Windows, and if you send it through Linux, it will run the same no matter what the cases are. Whatever your version of o operating system is, it will run the same. Extensive infrastructure for scientific computing. It supports all kind of infrastructures, be it your small laptops, PCs, or be it, supercomputers. 
it supports all. More institutions are adopting it as part of the development. Uh, the institution which I am working under, which is INCF, International Neuroinformatics Coordinating Facility, is uh, one of the organizations which uses Python for all of its work, except there are some pro projects which are made under C++, but most of the time it's mostly done under Python. And there are other organizations like Nathan Perkins Institute. Then we have Polrack Lab, which I'm currently working under. It's a Stanford, uh, it's a lab which is currently under Stanford University. All of these labs and uh, labs and the organizations run, um, you make use of Python for all of their projects. Conduct data analysis using R Python, Octave slash Scilab. So basically what this means is you can link, you can import your package, Octave package, you can import R Python, you can import Scilab, you can import MATLAB or whatever you need for your project. And after you are done with your project in neuroimaging, you can then you can then uh, do data analysis on it to filter certain results, then modify those results and make them presentable for the neuro uh, neuroscientists and neuroinformaticians, which is my next point, easily under so which like easily understandable by neuroscientists. Uh, the thing with this point is, uh, since Python is a scripting language, and it's one, it's one of the easiest to understand. So even you give a, you give a student to learn, okay, uh, start uh, reading some commands in Python, uh, within one or two days, he will start to understand, okay, this is how Python works, this is how Python runs. So once within one or two days, if he learns a bit about Python, he can understand what's, what, are the, what are these functions about, what is this class about, how are these running together. So next point is neuroscientists can create their own packages easily according to their re requirements. So basically what this means is since this is linked to my work first point which is easy to learn, since it's easy to learn you can create, program your own packages for your own requirements. Like uh, if I want to make a package which runs all the pipelines in a parallel uh, computing architecture, neuroscientists can easily create one of those. Or if I want to create a package which links to MATLAB and then make, then mask the filter, uh, filters, the, uh, filters the whole image, and improves the quality of the image, it can be done easily. So that brings to the next slide, what is NiPipe? So this is the basic architecture of NiPipe. It consists of three parts out here, interfaces, execution plugins, and the workflow engine. So our next slides will bring us to explaining all of these. So the first slide is engine. So we have uh, three parts, actually two, I'm sorry. Two parts in this, uh, in this slide. First of all is the node. Basically what a node does is you have a function it is wrapped inside and you can link it to other nodes together to run a whole program. So it is basically what I am saying is about the workflow, like you have one, one function, you have another function, you wrap them together in a node, you link them together, that is one workflow. And then a workflow, it's a, it's a graph whose nodes are of type node, map node, as I explained to you, you, uh, you have two nodes, you link them together, and then you create a workflow. As it is, you can have multiple nodes linked together. You can have a MATLAB 
uh, script uh, linked with a, a Python script, or you can have an SPM program linked to a Python script. Whatever the case, work, you can do all the things in a workflow. Then we have executable plugins. So basically, this is uh, all the packages, softwares which we require to run the program at our convenience. So basically, as you can see right here, it's Torque, IPython, Linear, SSH, all of these plugins which we require to run our program is executable plug uh, comes under executable plugins. We require IPython so that we can share our uh, whatever program we are written to a Python notebook. We require a linear to share our share, make new uh, new pipelines, new workflows, multiproc to run a, a single script in a multiple process, multiple threads, SSH to link to computers. And then we have many other packages like these, which come under executable pl plugins. So then we come with installation of NiPipe. So it's readily available as one of the packages in NeuroDebian, which is made by, again, INCF, Python package index. Or you can just fork it from GitHub and run your own deployment. Uh, currently, it's, uh, I think, uh, the version of uh, NiPipe is 0 0.11. I'm not sure. I think it's 0 0.11. So basically, we require all these dependencies before we install NiPipe in our, in our computer. NumPy, SciPy, IPython, NiBabel. Nibab uh, I think I forgot to add one more. There is a package called Network X. I forgot to add that one. Okay. Uh, so, after you install all of these packages and you you are done with it, you have to ensure that all tools are installed and accessible. This basically means that. Uh, you have to check the version of whatever tools you have installed, what are the versions, where are they stored, the exact path of the uh, installation, installation path so that you can link it later on to your script. And you have to ensure that, okay, once you have linked these scripts together, once you have linked these installation paths together, it should not happen that, okay, I write my path in, in a program or a script, and it happens that it cannot access it. It should not happen. And one point to be mentioned, it's very important. Uh, NiPipe is an umbrella project under NiPy, and it's not a substitute for the imaging packages like ANTS, FSL, or AFNI. Uh, basically, what this means is it's a sub-project under NiPy, and in no means it is not meant to be substituted by a package like ANTS or FSL. You still need those packages to run your tool or your script. And uh, one should not uh, use, uh, should think that, okay, so basically, these are some of the softwares which are used in NiPipe. Uh, one of them is Free Camino. It's one of the softwares which is used for diffusion MRI. NILearn, it's um, a package which is made by Gail Warokwa, uh, who is again one of my mentors. It's a machine learning package for neuroimaging. And uh, SPM for recording the brain activity for your experiments, then we have MNE -N -E for magnetoencephalography and electroencephalography. So, and then we have AFNI, which is for processing functional MRI images and analyzing them. 
these are just some of the few packages we have more and not all of these uh, all of the tools which are tools and softwares in which are there in nepipe are not necessarily updated they are some of them are deprecated even so developers keep working on that even now so now we move on to some of the code for working with uh, nepipe so we will take an example for uh, nepipe so our example is basically we are taking an mri functional mri scan uh, for of it could be anyone it could be a monkey it could be a human it could be a vauxhall rat it could be any species and then we realign the mri scan basically this means it's okay if we have an mri scan there must there will obviously be some kind of uh, head bobbing you know when there is a mri scan there will be head bobbing there will be shaking in the equipment so we basically realign the mri scan to make those corrections co registration basically what this means is we have our mri scan we link it to our anatomical scan the basic anatomical scan which is available online anywhere normalization to fit the brain images uh, since size of each organism brain is different vauxhall rat human monkey macaque whatever our organism you pick up their brain sizes are different so we have to fit the fmri images the output of the co registration to so that it fits according to that size and then seeding to improve the final quality so we basically just filter color filter in the process of seeding so the first step to every nipipe program is basically we first create a workflow of what we want to do so workflow is a pipeline to process data a directed acyclic graph which represents data flow nodes are processes or functions it just so the flow of data defining the input and output of processing node is a must so basically what we mean by saying this is we define an input we define an output the lines in between define okay this and this uh, processes and functions are linked together finally and uh, they are directed together with a uh, in a in an acyclic graph uh, sorry so uh actually i made this kind of like a flow chart because um, uh, the acyclic uh, graph wasn't coming properly i'm sorry for that uh, so i'll explain you what the start and end over here means uh the start over here is the fri fmri scan which we have in question it could be any organism once again so then we realign so then we realign the uh, we realign it along uh, according to the target target image we co register it to an uh, anatomical scans smoothen it filter it normalize it according to the brain brain image seed the final image and then we get the output the final output so this will be a first step uh, first level fmri analysis so we first import the necessary modules which we require for our uh, program as you can see it's a lot of import statements out here uh, as you can see in the second line right here in nipipe.interfaces.afni import dspike dspike is one of the packages which is required to remove all the spikes within your fmri images free surfer to convert your mri image by uh, make it in a binary format applying volume transformations making a volume tra uh, volume matrix and so on we have a lot of and then we have the final a uh, final import statement nipipe.pipeline.engine import workflow node map node 
So, basically this enables us to create our own workflow, create our own nodes, create make a link between the two, uh, two nodes and mapping them together. Next. And then we basically, our next step is to import some of the statements and script locations for MATLAB and FreeSurfer. So, we import the necessary package which is MATLAB command and after that we set our default path. In this case it's SPM12 and then we give the necessary options to the computer that okay we require this option and we have the location for our free surfer program. In this case it's NIPA, slash NIPA tutorial slash free surfer and we set that to our default fs command uh, co command function. And then we define all the parameters which you require. In this case, our output directory will go to this. Our working directory is present over here. We have our fmri slices should uh, be 40. You can set it to 20 or 100. But as you increase the number of slices, it's obvious that the computing process will increase. The load on the computer will increase. And then we have time repetition. So time, as you increase time repetition, the, there will be an increase in the computational load and the FWHM size. So basically this tells the computer that this will be the size of my, uh, of my final output. Uh, okay. So after this, we create nodes. So basically, the, as I said once again, uh, we create functions, which is again processes for our pre uh, for the pre-processing of our F final for the input MR, fMRI image. So in this case, we are first giving order uh, order interleaved order. Basically, this means to okay. So we have. Uh, a number of slices of our script, of our, uh, sorry, of our MRI image. You slice them and then you order them accordingly to whatever the area which is required. Like cingulate cortex could be one, uh, one of the areas, neuronal cortex could be one area, amygdala could be one area. And then we apply slice timing. Second one is realign which is correcting for motion motion problems which happen during the MRI uh, scanning uh, process. Smoothing, to smooth the images with a given kernel. Uh, in the final, in this one, I actually put these two in comments because I will explain you later these, uh, these uh, these things work uh, differently accordingly. So, so we smooth. So we have. Uh, uh, so what we basically do in smoothing is we smooth our image four times, five times, and so on. Uh, the last line, as you can see right here, surface underscore f w h m four comma six comma eight. It means that we have to run our subgraph several times, okay. We'll run one fMRI image uh, and filter it four times. We'll run one fMRI image, run it six times. Uh, we'll run it parallelly or we can run it serially in three ways. DB register, co-register a volume to the free surfer anatomical surface. Basically this means we have an anatomical surface. Uh, then we have our uh, output image which we get from smoothening we register it to the anatomical surface. And then finally, we connect all of these nodes together. Uh, we connect all of these nodes together in the final line, which is normalize is equals to pe.node interface spm.normalize. So basically what we are doing right here is uh, we have a package from engine called node and uh, we connect this with a function called normalize. 
and name it something called normalized. So, this is the connect connectivity of uh, workflows. So, we first name our uh, workflow, it could be anything first level analysis, second level analysis, FSL analysis, it could be anything. Then we connect these together, we realign. So, you could put any number of parameters in workflow.connect, realign, BV register, you can write it separately so that you do not want any conflicts in your functions. Uh, then we have our next, we start with the main processing, which is the level 1 design analysis. So, basically this is all mathematical processing. We, we derive, basically we have a matrix, it derives based on that and conducts interscanning. Uh, so, we apply estimate contrast, volume transformation, converting MRI to a, a zipped file format, okay. Uh, so, I guess this is it. Uh, for more information, you can look on all these resources which I aggregated together and as it is, I would like to mention my special thanks to all of these professors whom some of them I work under. Thank you. Guys, any questions? Questions? Hey, yes. I am Kumar Subham. Yeah, sure. yeah. I have a question. Uh, Python is never meant for high processing and for speed. And here you are talking about the real data like brain monitoring and the neurotransmitting. So, I want to know like how it is more accurate than C or so I want to know. Uh, it's, I know it's not accurate, but again, as I said, speed and accuracy come at a cost. Like you increase speed, uh, you decrease accuracy, or you de increase accuracy, you decrease speed. They come both come at a cost. So this is the, this is the sacrifice which some of my mentors or developers which have, which they have to make for running. Uh, for making knee pipe. So, basically they had to, you know, like uh, sacrifice the accuracy. It will, it is not accurate obviously, because uh, as it is we are using third party packages too. We have MATLAB, we are using MATLAB, we are using FSL. These are, all of these are not updated. MATLAB is updated, I know. But some of these packages like free Camino is there. We have MNE, MNE is there. Some of them are deprecated, some of them are not updated periodically. So, there could be problems where you have a new image coming in, FRI, fMRI image coming in and you do not get the final output. Yeah. So, this happens normally. So, this is the sacrifice which they had to make, but it has worked so far until now. No problems, no issues. So, what you guys are doing to make that improvement? Uh, basically, we are still working on that. We are slowly removing the deprecated packages, if possible. If there is, if it's possible uh, that if it's still useful, even if it's deprecated, we don't remove it. But if it happens that okay, it's useless, I don't still want to use it, we remove it instantly, and uh, we keep on updating the packages, obviously, and we still work as a third uh, neuroscientist and neuroinformaticians work on new packages which is aside from this pro project outside of this pro project domain like okay. uh, one of the projects i can mention you fancy pipe uh, it's made by one of my mentors uh, whom i'm currently working under it's a package for running serial or parallel uh, pipelines like you can, you have a pipeline, you can run it serially or you can run it parallelly. So, this is outside the domain of NiPipe. So, this is what we are doing currently. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I expected this to be very difficult. I do not, I am surprised I am not seeing any questions. So, I thank you guys for patiently listening to this talk.
thank you all